Hi. Uh, in this video, I'm going to do uh, demonstrate the creation of the simulation model for grapefruit computers. So in the lecture, we talked about we have the laptop demand. So we have a probability that uh, we have the probabilities for demands anywhere from zero to four. So we collected some data and got this probability distribution. Their standard policy is to order one computer every week. And we created a, a flow diagram that, that really showed how we want to construct the, it helps us construct the simulation. So we're going to start with the beginning inventory. We get a certain amount of demand. We can then determine how many computers we sold. We'll end up with an ending inventory. From that, we can compute the shortage, uh, if we had a shortage of computers. And then our shortage cost will depend on the shortage. Our holding cost will, be tend to, will depend on the ending inventory. And we can calculate our weekly revenue, which is the main measure that we are interested in. So to start, uh, our starting conditions are that the week previous, we ended with zero computers in our ending inventory. Uh, we order one every week. It arrives. So the beginning inventory, the beginning inventory um, is going to be one. Our demand is going to be a random variant. So we have to generate our random variant. So we go to the data tab at the top, our data analysis tool pack, and the random number generator. So I have the number of variables. I want one variable. Uh, the laptop demand is my variable. I've set this up for 100 weeks uh, for our simulation. So I want 100 random variants. It's from a discrete distribution. I have my choice of various distributions, but this is a discrete distribution from our data collection. Uh, for a discrete distribution, it wants to know the value and probabilities uh, as an input range. So here's all my values of x and the probabilities of x, of each value of x. Um, I wanted to put a random seed in here. Uh, if I put a random seed in, I will get the same numbers that you see in the lecture. Um, however, they're not really random numbers. So in this case, I'll leave the random seed out. I'll put in an output range. So my output range is starts in this cell. And I say OK. So I have demand here for 100 weeks. It comes from this probability distribution. So 20% of the time I should see zeros. 40% of the time I should see ones. 20% of the time I should see twos, etc. So that's my demand. So now I need uh, to determine the number sold. In this case, my beginning inventory was one. My demand was two. So how many did I sell? I can only sell one. If my demand had been 1, I would have sold 1. If my demand had been 0, I would have sold 0. So I have to figure out how to put a formula in here that will give me the correct number sold. And it really ends up just being, I can only sell as many as I have or as many as I have the demand for. So. I can put the formula that says equals the minimum of those two cells. So in this case, the lowest of those two numbers is 1. So that's how many I can sell. My end, ending inventory is going to be equal to the beginning inventory minus the number that I sold. So I say equals beginning inventory minus sold. My shortage is going to be uh, if my demand exceeds my inventory, which it does in this case. 
So my demand was two. I only had an inventory of one to begin with. If I'd had a beginning inventory of two, my shortage would have been zero. If I'd had a beginning inventory of zero, my shortage would have been two. So here I can see the shortage is the difference between the demand and the beginning inventory, but I need to avoid getting negative numbers because if my demand had been less than my beginning inventory, I would end up with a negative number. So there's two ways I can do that. I can say equals if, use an if statement. So if demand is greater than the beginning inventory, comma, I want the demand minus the beginning inventory. So if my logical test is true, I want the difference between those two. Otherwise, I want zero. So that gives me the correct shortage of one. The other way to do that statement is to say it's a it's the equals the minimum of the demand or the beginning inventory. Same idea. It's it's going to be the smaller of the two. So either way will work. My shortage costs each computer each each shortage is cost me five hundred dollars in lost business and goodwill. So I'm going to say the shortage cost is equal to my shortage times 500. My holding cost for every computer I hold over to the next week cost me $50. So that's equal to my ending inventory times 50. In this case, there is no holding cost. And my weekly revenue, my profit is $850. So my revenue is my number sold times $850. And then minus my shortage cost and minus my holding cost. So this week I made $350. The next week, what's my beginning inventory going to be? The next week, my beginning inventory is going to be equal to my ending inventory plus one, because my standard order poli ordering policy is I order one computer a week. So I can copy that down for 100 weeks, and I can copy all of these formulas and paste them down for 100 weeks. And it's a good idea to just go through the first few weeks and make sure everything makes sense. So I ended up with an end ending inventory of zero. I ordered one, I get one, I have zero demand, I sell zero, I end up with one, I order another one, I have two. My demand is one, so I sell one. I end up with one left. I order another one, so I get two to begin the next week. Demand is one, I sell one. I end up with one. I order another one. I have two. My demand is two, so I can sell two. I end up with none. So it seems that everything is working fine. Now at the bottom, after the at the bottom of the hundred weeks here. I did have formulas in to calculate some averages and, and a probability of a shortage. Probability of the shortage, I've actually used a count if. Right, so if I look at my, my shortage column, so F column, where I had zero shortages, I did not have a shortage. So the statement count if, it will count how many zeros it finds in that range of numbers. So I say count if, I give it a range, and then say equals zero. So it's going to count the number of zeros it finds. So that's those are the times I didn't have a shortage. 
I will then take that number, subtract it from 100 weeks to give me the number of times I did have a shortage, and then divide by the 100 weeks. And that will give me a probability of a shortage. So it looks like I have a shortage 0.29 of the time, or 29% of the time. Now, we're going to try a couple of different ordering policies. So I'm going to take these numbers and copy them and paste them down here. Uh, I have to paste values because they're formulas up above. So we'll just keep track of what we're doing there. Our average weekly revenue uh, with this current policy is $534. So let's see what happens if we order two every week. So to change that for standard order now of two computers a week, I just need to change my beginning inventory and say that it's going to be my ending inventory from the week before plus two. And then I will copy that down To the rest. And that's pretty easy to see that I end up with some fairly large inventories here. In fact, it seems to be getting bigger and bigger. I end up with 40 computers. So that's not going to work very well. But I can just keep track of those figures. So copy, paste values, I can see I've certainly reduced my probability of shortage, uh, but my average, my holding costs, my average holding costs have gone way up. Uh, my weekly revenues have gone down, way, uh, significantly down. Right? I'm not losing as much as far as shortages go, but um, I, it's the holding costs have certainly affected my revenues. So now with Simulation, we can do all sorts of things that we can't necessarily build into a strict mathematical model. So now I'm going to try my option three, which is if the ending inventory is zero, order, I'm going to order two computers. Otherwise, order one. So I can build this into my, um, my uh, model by just changing this beginning inventory formula again. So I, now I'm going to say that this is equal to if, use the if statement again, if my ending inventory here equals zero. Comma. Then I want the beginning inventory to be two because it'll be zero plus two. Otherwise, I want it to be the ending inventory plus one. So in this case, I had an invent ending inventory of zero. I ordered, that means I will order two. And so I start out with two computers. Now I'll copy that formula down so we get it throughout the rest of the model. Uh, do a little check. We ended in inventory with two, so we only order one. We end with two, we only order one. We end with two, we only order one. If we come down here, here we end with zero, we order two. So our new uh, function in there seems to be working well. Let's go down and see how our policy works. So we'll take our averages here, copy. Paste our values. And 
we can see, certainly our average weekly revenue has gone up to $876. So that seems like a good policy. We can check some of the others, our average ending inventory has come down to 1, average shortage is 0. Um, so we actually haven't had a shortage all the way through. Oh, we do have, we have, so we have had some shortages, but that doesn't round. This is rounded down, I guess. It doesn't round. Um, and so that's the grapefruit computer example.